We got ourselves a Toyota tow vehicle. That's right. This is a 2015 Toyota Sienna minivan. It's got the 3.5 liter V6. And a customer states that their, uh, their trailer kind of makes this thing sag out a little bit. Now, this thing has a set of uh, helper airbags inside of the coil springs in the rear axle. And those particular airbags have become dry rotted and they leak and they no longer support the weight of the vehicle when the trailer is on this thing. Now don't get me wrong, it's not like a massive giant gooseneck trailer or anything, but it is enough trailer to cause a little bit of a squat, which is why that's, uh, those bags are installed. So what we are going to do today is hopefully gonna be a quick and easy job. And I say that because I'm, I'm at a point of beyond exhaustion uh, on this particular Mustang over here. I'm putting some exhaust manifold bolts in, or headers in it, uh, tubular exhaust manifolds rather, and it's been a bear of a job to say the least. You can see we've got the subframe out of it. Uh, both manifolds are in, but the issue that I'm having is getting the bolts tightened because now that those equal length manifolds are there, there's no straight line access to the fasteners. Uh, there'll be more on that to come. I'm doing a whole series on that car. Uh, but before we finish that thing, I need to get this one knocked out because I've been waiting on parts for over a week uh, to, uh, to replace these bags inside of these springs. So let's get this unit up in the air. I'm gonna get straight to it. Uh, we need to take the shocks off, drop the axle down, remove the springs, pull the bags out of the springs, and then insert a new set of bags into the springs. And uh, hopefully that will be a easy as pie, no problem, nice and simple job. So stay tuned because this is going to be a very good aftermarket parts video. Yeah, no, this is not an infomercial. No, these people didn't pay me to... Uh, to install these components or anything like that or to make this video i'm just simply replacing the torn out worn dry rotted rat eaten uh, uh whatever you want to call it bags with a set of replacements what we need to do here is pull the wheels off i need to support the axle with some jack stands on either side and then we can remove the shock absorbers from the uh the bracket right here that's going to allow me to lower the axle down taking pressure off the springs then we can pry bar the springs out, pull the bags out of the springs, put the bags back in the springs, and then reverse procedure for installation. So that's the, that's the plan. Now, time is definitely of the essence here. Dave is at lunch, and I have to get this car done today. And I'm all out of lifts. So I've got a Mustang torn apart here, the Mazda engine sitting on the ground over here, and I need to knock this one out, because like I said, it's been waiting for like a week for some parts. So I would ideally like to get this done before Dave gets back from lunch. That way he can have the lift back and then I can go back to work on the Stang over there. So uh, we're going to make haste. I'm gonna get through this super, super duper fast as possible. I'm on a massive time crunch. It is a Friday. Let's get after it. I hope it's gonna be a good video. If it's not, then, uh, well then you guys are gonna click away and then you're not gonna, subscribe to the channel and you're certainly not going to engage the like buttons and that is uh the antithesis of what the goals are here today with this particular youtube video so there we go that's uh that's one wheel off to the other side with us oh yeah and we're doing a set of pads and rotors on this uh while i have the wheels off too forgot about that until i saw the condition that the rear rotor conditions were in and then realized I have more to do. So yeah, I'm jam packed full of stuff. No pressure. No pressure. That was stuck. And I need to eat. Definitely have to eat lunch today. It's imperative. Maybe i got a feeling I will not be finished with this until after Dave returns. Maybe I can get Dave to slap the brakes on this uh, while I uh, finish up with the axle work. That, uh, that's a good possibility here. So what I need to do, two jack stands. Each one of them is going to go under the shock mount on either side. Take the shock off, let her down with the screw jacks, and then uh, we'll pop the springs out. Well, my big screw jacks are in place here. Let's go ahead and pull the nuts off. For the shocks and the big washer 
set this stuff down. We'll do one side, then we'll flip right on over to the other side. <laughs> Dust in my face because the wind is in my face. Okay, a little bit of pry bar action here. We can move the maneuver this shock absorber off the stud. Pull that back and out of the way so it doesn't reset itself, so to speak. And repeat over here on the passenger side. Pry that guy off. Ooh, things moved. Some jostling just took place. So now just lower these uh, screw jacks a little bit the other way we're gonna lower it the other way oh can't see horrible cameraman now this is letting the axle settle and come into a lower position that is relieving spring pressure against the axle and then once that spring pressure is gone we can, uh, we can pull the springs out then extract the bags I think I already said that, but in case you didn't, I said it twice. Yeah, see the gap forming in the spring? That's what we're looking for. If all goes well, maybe I can knock these brakes out before Dave gets back. That's going to be my goal, because I've got one more car here today that I would like to finish up and get it shipped out uh, before in today scooch in a little bit and we can see there's this uh there's that rubber line that supplies the air uh, the way these things air up is these lines are going to run to a fitting where you could use your uh like a tire inflator to add air pressure to the system so fortunately for me the plumbing already exists uh, all we need to do is just pull the bags out and uh and change them with replacement bags okay spring okay, let's pull this little puck out this thing is necessary and will need to be replaced did we not go down any farther i think that's all she wrote here i know i'll lift the vehicle up some on the rack maybe that'll give me some more space here moving on up Oh yeah. It's working. Alright, that's that. Axle's fully in a dangling position here. It's fully dangly. Like 100% dangly. So now, yep, we're going to go in here with a pry bar and work this spring out or maybe do it from up top. Yeah, I'm going to try it up top, I think. It might be easier. Maybe not. Don't say spring compressor. You can't put spring compressors in here. That's not going to work that way. bigger pry bar. I'll tell you what, I'm going to take this uh, pry bar here, stick it in this axle, and then pry the axle down farther. Now, there's no spring pressure here, it's all just kind of dangling. Pry it down far enough and then I can pull that out, just like so. There we go. Let's put the isolator down. And that's one spring pulled out, removed. So now, I'm going to just dig this bag out of here and get the new one shoved in. Let's see. I should just break it, cut it. It's not very pliable anymore. It's just kind of brittle and crumbly. Come on, bag. Don't let me forget uh, what way the business end of this bag was pointed. I would surely hate to install these upside down in my haste. Simple mistakes like that happen. I was uh, I was in a super huge hurry one time, 
putting a crankshaft uh, pulley on a Jeep, you know, the harmonic balancer. And it was end of day and I was feeling really rushed to get it done. Oh yeah, it fits right in there, no problem. I was in this huge rush to get it done and I, uh, I took the pulley off, set it down, grabbed the bolt, and I grabbed the old pulley because the new one was like on another cart next to me. I grabbed the old pulley, put the thing back in, bolted it in, started the engine up, got the belt back on, et cetera, et cetera. Not in that order. And it still made the same noise. And I, I look over and I see the brand new crankshaft pulley sitting right there on the bench. And I'm like, yeah, face slap, error of judgment. It was kind of funny, kind of comical, but uh, yeah, things like that do happen. So being in a rush, that'll, that'll get you tore up from the floor up like every time. Anyway, set the spring, set the guy back in. I'll get the isolator referenced properly. So that's gonna point that way. Now I just need to pry this down again and shove this spring back up into its position here. Oh, sketchy. Oh, slippage. Need more leverage. There. Need another hand. Dave's not here, man. All my weights on this pry bar. There we go. Got it. A little bit of oomph at the top. Sent it home. A little bit farther. Good. The good good. Okay, so now that I think I've got the procedure down pat, let's go on over here to this other side and I will do the exact same thing. Get that line out of there. Cut it. Get the puck out. Okay, pry bar going into the hole in the axle. And then we give this a shove downward, just like that uh, driver's side. Shove the axle down. I'd like that isolator to just stay up there where it is, but that's not going to work. Set that aside. Spring's coming out. Oh yeah, this is easier than I thought it was going to be. That Mustang had me, uh... Well, look at you spinning around. That Mustang's got me a little pessimistic. I'm very upside down in it. It's causing me grief, and I disapprove of my grief. Here, you know what? I don't feel like messing with this. going in perfect and we've got new pucks to go with it all right I took a took a quick intermission so I can inhale some food I had a, a buffalo chicken spicy wrap from Arby's that's what Lauren got me it was convenient so uh, let's get uh, let's get this thing back in position here I've got to reference see the flat right here on uh, top of the spring well I've got to make uh, make that flat fit with the indentation in the isolator which is tough to see there, there it is I see the old mark witness marks they're great for lining stuff back up so that's how that went so what we'll do is stick that back in there like so hope you guys can see what I'm up to now I'm prying back down on that axle again we're gonna shove this spring back into its position raw right there nope missed it there we go <sighs> beautiful okay that's in position here that's what we want so now i'm going to grab those two pucks that go at the base of these springs 
get those in, then we'll jack this axle back up and reassemble. I have decided that I'm just gonna knock this brake job out because Dave is finishing up on a, another vehicle and I don't wanna pull him 10 ways from Sunday. I don't like to do that to people. Even though I've, I do it to myself all the time, I'm not gonna do it to Dave. There we go. Here, I'll just put that down there to hold on to the puck. And that one already fell down, so we're good. So now, let me raise the van back up slightly. Put these jacks back under here. I'm trying to figure out the easiest way to do this. Here, we'll just run this guy back up. Seems to be working uh, with ease here. This is good. The springs are still in line. This is also good. I took the, uh, the other pole jack and put that back in position. Now what I'm gonna do is just kind of slowly let the van down some in order to create some downward pressure on these pole jacks. And that's gonna swing the uh, radius of the axle upwards and get everybody lined up. Coming down slowly, safely. Uh, okay. So we're changing angles and geometry here. If you look at the bottom of this pole jack, starting to lean and we're forming a gap on this side because the pole jack is coming this way at the top due to the geometric design of this axle. So what I need to do down here is just kind of kick that guy over. It's not kicking. Hammer that guy over and make it fit. Mad at time. You do this kind of thing incrementally so you're not making super large adjustments. Now the jack is vertical again. Uh, that other side did not do it, so we're gonna continue to let this down slowly again until the proper alignment has been achieved. Couple more bangs with the mallet down below, straighten the, the uh, pull jack out. The other side now requires a, uh, a similar treatment over there. Beautiful. Okay, we're down to what do we got here? Two inches? Yeah, about two more inches left. So, down on the jack. On the lift, a little bit more. There it is. Okay. Throw the washer on it, get the nut back on it, and then back over to the driver's side. pinched my finger. Excellent. So here, let's let this pole jack down. Or better yet, let's just raise the truck up. That'll work. Yeah. Pole jack's coming out. Boy. Go ahead and tighten down the shocks. That side. And of course, the other side. Clickage. Almost there on this segment. And then I can throw these brakes on. We're gonna do a speed run on that too. Get this thing knocked out, ready to rock and roll. So what we need to do is take this airline, 
plummet through the bottom of the hole here. And you can't see. Terrible cameraman. Yeah, that's the thing about these speed runs. I can only focus on so many things at once. Stick that guy back on the splines right here. I need a pair of pliers to hold that a little better, I think. I may be short on flangey strength. Nope, now we got it. Look at that. That's in, so that line is good. Line that stuff up properly. And similar situation here on the other side. Flip the light. Take the hose, run it through the bottom. Reach in the hole. Wiggle that onto the fitting. That's good. Sell it up. And that is one bag replacement complete. Excellent. Woo hoo. So now, let's get the goodies out of here. I'm gonna rip through this brake job super quick like, and then uh, this truck's good to go because they need their vehicle back. It's been here a couple weeks, like I said, and, and I feel bad for such things. I don't like to have two, three week turnarounds unless it's a major project. This was a kind of a fairly minor project with the exception of a little bit of engine work, which we did a couple weeks ago. Had the intake manifold off of it for a set of spark plugs. This is the one where the dealership gave them like a, uh, I think like a $3,500 estimate or more just for some random stuff that they kind of didn't need. Uh, regardless, I got them fixed up. So uh need a 13 and a, it's like a 16 to get these brakes out of here. And the speed run continues. Get our caliper bolts out. I didn't think that through, did I? There. See how you make silly little mistakes when you're in a hurry? Calipers off. Let's get these pads out of here. Yep, super thin. And what do I need for a 16 back there? Yep. Let's see here. Coming in back side of our rotor. Looking down on it. There's that bolt. Unclickage. Ooh, that's on there tight too. Come on, there we go. Neutral drop. And the bottom side. rotor peeled off of here. Gonna need some hammer action. Purdy. That does not mean I get to skip out on my due diligence, so let's clean out these drums. There's a bit of brake dust building up here. I'd like it to be nice and shiny, going back together. I am washing the paint off the uh, off the springs there. Goodbye paint. That's very smooth. No polishing needed. Rotor coming in, and this is a coated rotor. So there's no oil on it, but you can see it looks like it's painted. It's not paint, it's just the, uh, the coating. It serves the same function uh, as the, uh, what you want to call it. Um, duh, it's escaping me. It serves the same functioning as the oiled rotors. There's a relief right here and that relief has to accommodate that little hole right there. I had it installed incorrectly. Yep, off on a tangent. That little hole 
is to fill the plug so you can reach in there with a screwdriver and make an adjustment. Let me take this rubber plug out, I'll show you. That's for adjusting from the front side with an adjuster. But it's got a little rubber plug there. It goes in that hole. You'd be surprised how many times people omit this when replacing a brake rotor. Stick that back in. There we go. Due diligence achieved. Now let's uh, get the pads on the bracket and hang that bracket again. Let's back out of here and head over to the bench area real quick, like. Take our old bracket. And I need to pop the shims out and change them with the replacement shims that came uh, with the pads here. Get rid of that. I do these one at a time so that we can, uh, we can match them up because they're often going to find that they're a different, different shim for each, uh, each location. That's not right. That's not right. That's not right. That one's right. There we go. So this one goes right in there like so. Pop the next one out. Match it up. Good. People elect on occasion to not replace these shims. Um, I am. Uh, I include myself as one of those people. It's dependent on the quality of the uh, the new shim and the condition of the bracket. Sometimes these are kind of rust jacked and you do not have the option to fit another shim in. They just, uh, they'll have a fitment issue. That one. Uh, how did it go? This way, yep. But these, uh, these Import Direct branded pads, these are actually very high quality and I like their shims, so I change them out. But not sponsored, that's just what I buy. They're not the cheapest, but I have yet to encounter an issue with this brand of shim, pad, brake product. Or actually any of their other products for that matter as well. I've, uh, they, they make more than just brake pads, it's actually pretty good stuff. Okay, all four of the pads that came in the box are the same. So they're not, uh, it doesn't matter which position or orientation they go in. What I'm gonna do here is set these pads up in the bracket. Come here. Then we'll slide the bracket over the rotor, bolt it in, and then hang the caliper. Kind of wiggle that guy in there. Oh, too far. Begin wiggling properly now, too far. Not gonna get me a third time. There we go. Okay, let's grease the slide pins. Can't forget the grease. Top and bottom. A little dab of purple lube here. Extra, put that back in the hole. Okay, let's go hang this thing on the bracket and then get the caliper bolted back into position here. Look, my magnet. Flip that over. There we go. And one bolt right here, hang that one on the top. Second bolt down below. Give it the reach around treatment here. Get kind of dark. Okay, that one's in. Good. Around the back side so we can stop staring at the front of that rotor. Let's get these guys tight. Clickage. Twice clickage. There we go. To save us all a little bit of time, I've already compressed the caliper piston when, uh, when you guys weren't looking. I think y'all have seen enough brake jobs where you know what to expect. You put the tool in it, compress the piston, send it back, 
seat it, and then install it. One bolt, second bolt, brake job speed run is nearly 50% complete, which is good. There we go. Clickage, cool. One side is done, that's shiny, beautiful. Let's go knock out the other side, get the wheels on, we'll burnish these pads in and send this van back home where it belongs. Because it's homesick, it's been gone for so long. Way too long. Now, you may have noticed from that other side that those pads didn't look horrible, but this one is the reason that we're doing a brake job. We're coming up on some paper thin action here, just a couple millimeters. Okay, coming back in again with the electron ratchet. Let's remove the bracket. Okay, let's make the, uh, the drum inside shiny again. Get rid of the paint on the spring. That way it matches the other side so we know it's good to buy paint. Excellent. Okay, paying mine to the indent. We've got the little rubber insert reinstalled on our new rotor. Slip that guy back over, this is good. And now we'll take the bracket and prep the bracket with the pads. Get, uh, get those things set up and reinstalled. Then we'll rehang the driver's side bracket. Okay, let's just do it like this. There, much more better. No, no, yes. Yes, yeah, it's getting easier now. We're running out of options. Next one's gonna be a 50-50 chance that we get it right on the first try. We lose, yes. See, even though the odds were in our favor to get that right, we lost that one. That's why uh, I don't gamble. Yes. There we go. Shims are in. No lube. It's running dry, folks. It's running dry. going in at an angle depress the little springs on those shims slide it into the grooves flip it stick it press it push it slip it out the back oops twice come on there we go and it fell out of the front I pushed too hard and it fell out there we go beautiful okay back to the vehicle with us 
fastest brake job ever on YouTube ever. Ever, ever. Forever, ever, forever, ever, ever. Okay, that stuff's in, good to go. Around the back side yet again one more time. We'll get those bolts in position. Twist them, torque them, tighten them, and then hang the caliper. Again. Okay, there's one. Second one. Did you guys see how I was maneuvering and kind of shaking everything around trying to get that to line up? I believe that that is actually the reason that when I'm doing something and manipulating something, I have a handshake, like my fingers and hands will tremble or whatever. It's not that I'm jacked up on caffeine or there's a medical problem because I can hold my hand very stable. See that? Like it doesn't, it doesn't have that shake to it. But when I try to do things and hook things up and line things up, you constantly move it around so you can find the find where it's gonna fit or how it threads. And I think my crane branium is just pre-programmed to constantly jiggle my hands when I'm trying to set something up. Because I've noticed, people have noticed that my hands when I'm doing something, I'm like all freaking out. And, it, and again, it's it's not that I, I've got nerve damage or brake clean rotted my brain out or anything. I think that's just a, a learned cranial behavior designed to uh, accommodate trying to fit fasteners where they're supposed to go. You keep wiggling them around, then they go in. Okay, caliper is up next. Pads are in, rotors in. Calipers now in. Two fasteners. There she is. Clickage. Twice clickage. Beautiful. Okay, let's get out of here from under this vehicle and we'll get our wheels tossed on, torqued down, bolted up, and we'll get this thing out and on the road yet again. There we go. Stay. Stay. Hmm, I'm trying to screw these out with the wrong socket. I need a 21. What am I doing? And 21 impact gun. Nix. Beautiful. And one more on the other side. I've already hung the wheel. So that way you guys weren't looking because I'm good like that. Take her out on the road and break these brakes in. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We can't finish the video without at least testing out the airbags, right? That would just be horrible. So the way this works is, you know, we saw the bags. Here is the Schrader valve slash inlet for the bags. So all we really need to do is add a little bit of air pressure to it and it's gonna inflate those bags ever so slightly. And that's gonna provide some assistance. Oh, gravity. A little bit of assistance on the springs there. So, let's see if we can't manage this real quick. Fill it on up. There, we got eight pounds of pressure in the bag. And taking a look at the actual bags, you can see they expanded. They're slightly inflated and that is providing a little bit of extra lift and support uh, for those springs. That way it'll take the sag out of, uh, out of the tongue weight when you add a trailer to it. And that is that, quite simple. Now I did really, really luck out and did not have to install this system 
on uh, on a virgin vehicle that did not have the uh, the implements in place to utilize it. Uh, basically, I, it already had the plumbing and everything connected, so I did not have to install extra stuff, which was a win for me. It was also a win for the customer because I didn't have to charge them as much money. That's how that goes. Anyway, let's clear the rack. I gotta wash my flanges up so I don't fingerprint the inside of this van. And then we're gonna go out and burnish these uh, brakes and that will bring uh, this situation to conclusion. Okay, climbing on in this unit. Uh, as always, we need to pump up the brake pedal uh, before we try to go anywhere because those pistons and the calipers are all the way retracted and they need to uh, be expanded back out to make contact with the rotors and the pads. Restocking the engine. Couple more pumps, feeling good. Climate control on is climating. It's hot in here. Let's go ahead and back her out, get some speed going, and we're gonna burnish in these pads, and then this uh, operation will be fully complete. All right, guys, pedal feels good. The brakes are responsive. Everybody's working like they should be. Act of kindness shown to Act of kindness. And are asked how we Don't know what that's talking about. Must be some XM because I didn't have signal until we came out from under the awning. Fascinating. That means the building is protecting me from radio waves. All right. All righty, folks. We're going to do the normal uh, test drive protocol here. Make a series of right turns. We're going to go up and over that bridge over there to our left. Get some speed going. Uh, we can give some light pressure on the brakes over a long period of time on the downgrade from the bridge. And that is going to be sufficient to burnish in these rear rotors. I'm also doing light pedal pressure right now. Uh, the idea is, is you want a whole bunch of motion across the rotors, uh, across the pads from the rotor in order to knock down the microscopic peaks and valleys uh, in those fresh new virgin surfaces. So what you don't want to do is come up to a stop like right about now and leave brake, pe brake pedal pressure there. Reason being is once you start to knock down those peaks and valleys, there's a little bit of dust inside of there. And if you come to a complete stop when the brake system is warmed up, like the pads and rotors are at hot operating temp, it can actually embed that dust into the remaining peaks and valleys and it's gonna cause a different friction area right around the area where that pad stops. So uh, we basically just have to make sure that these wear in smoothly. It's like breaking in an engine a little bit. Um, you just kinda, again light pedal pressure over a lot of rotations and that's going to knock down the imperfections and it's going to mate one surface to another now in this particular case i don't have much of an option to throw it in neutral fortunately we don't have to stop long uh, and the brakes are not warm so yeah you don't have to completely avoid stopping but you don't want to stop and hold the pedal down or hold a bunch of pedal pressure Anyways, we're 50 miles per hour. That's approximately 80 kilometers per hour. And, oh, brake light's in front of me. I'm applying brake pedal pressure right now. I'll give it some gas, too. Speed back up a little bit since traffic's flowing normal. And again, light pedal pressure all the way down the bridge. A little heavier as we come up to a stop. I may do two circles around this, uh, around the bridge, just to make sure we have sufficient bedding into the pads. Regardless, uh, I don't think you guys want to uh, come with me for a secondary trip. So having said that, folks, I do not believe I have anything more to offer you uh, on this particular video, other than a thank you for watching this video. As always, hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about this uh, van in the comment section down below. Uh, if you would like to take a look at some of the engine work I did that the dealership had quoted multiple thousands of dollars on, uh, I will leave the link to the past video on this exact van down inside of this video's description. So you may go back in time and peruse that, uh, that engine repair work uh, at your leisure. So again, and as always guys, like thank you guys for watching. And most importantly, before I go, I'd like to remind each and every one of you to not forget to have yourselves a fantastic day. See you guys later in a video in a Sienna in a rear axle brake job slash helper spring installation assembly in a day, end of week, it's Friday, end of transmission. Parking the auto, Pew. powering down. Goodbye, Toyota.